G'day Cheeky Dogs! Today we're going to be breaking down the Bluey episode Granny Mobile from Bluey Season 3. Granny Mobile! And this is a very Muffin centric episode which I absolutely love because Muffin is one of my favourite characters and I am so excited to share with you guys all of the hidden little details that I found out in this episode. But first, let's roll that intro. G'day Cheeky Dogs! My name's Monkey and I'm an Australian currently living in America. So let's start off then with the traditional Easter eggs of course. We have two long dogs that we see in here. A blue one that is under the table as well as a white and brown one that is wrapped around the lolly bottle. We also see Cheddar Max as well hidden in the box. We see him sort of twice once in one screen and then again at the very end. Kind of sad no one wanted to buy Cheddar Max but good job to Bandit and Chili with trying to get rid of him. We also see the pineapple Easter egg as well in the form of a dish tray as well on one of the tables. Now of course Dory tables are littered with Easter eggs and references to real life antiques. Having a bit of a garage sale, Doreen. Yes, love. So let's go through them all. The Doreen ones, and then we're going to go through the Len ones as well. So we see the old balloon seller, which is a Royal Dalton figurine. It's worth hundreds of dollars as well. And we've seen this before as well at Nana's house too. We can also see the Staffordshire dogs. These were made in like the 1830s. They're based off the King Charles Spaniels. And they're really special because the King Charles Spaniels were considered like the more famous for being like the royal breed. And we can kind of tell that Doreen is a bit of like a... British royal fan based off some of the items that she has. But what's really important is that these are actually a pair, but there's only one being sold here, which is maybe a little sad because we kind of find out that the other one belongs to Len and that maybe he has it. So I'm going to talk about that in a second. Real quick cheeky dogs, I just want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Morgan & Morgan. Now, when I first moved to the US, I was actually involved in a car accident because the city I was in did not seem to believe in speed limits, unlike Australia, that is super strict. And I wish I had known what I had been entitled to at the time. Because if you are ever injured and you don't know where to start, with Morgan & Morgan it is so easy. They have modernized the injury law process, making it so easy to submit a claim. You can sign contracts, upload documents, and medical records all from your cell phone. You can even text your legal team throughout your case rather than going to meetings as well. So if you are ever injured in an accident then you can check out Morgan & Morgan. You can submit a claim in eight clicks or less without ever having to leave your couch. For more information you can go to forthepeople.com or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell phone. Okay back to the video. We also see a radio and cassette player, which maybe some of the newer generation won't know as much, but very classic for at least the early 2000s at the latest. We see a vintage spoon set as well as a 70s kitsch twin red cat ceramic set. We see the Stephen King novel Cujo in the books there. And of course the commemorative plate of the royal wedding between Prince Charles and Princess Diana, which of course is in the title card for Granny Mobile. Now I love how well they did like replicating this. Not only do the two dogs look miserable, just like what happened in real life with the actual marriage, but it even has royal wedding on it. It has July 1981. Now at first I thought that King Charles here or Prince Charles was depicted as a cavalier King Charles Spaniel. However, we found out from Alice Walsh's prop design board that apparently he's meant to be a type of hound and Diana is actually a Jack Russell. We see as well the platypus toy. Now this is a reference to the World Expo in 1988 that was held in Brisbane. The name of the platypus is Expo Oz and he wasn't actually designed by Australians. He was actually designed by the Disney Imagineering team, which is kind of cool. Well, if someone buys Len's old scooter, that'll help. Now, speaking of what stuff belongs to Len, who we are, yes, pretty sure is no longer with us. One of the animators, Alice Walsh, kind of made a comment about the items on the table and the fact that Len, RIP, so he's obviously passed away and maybe has the other Staffordshire dog in his coffin or something happened to it. But of course, we learn within the show that he's passed away because Bandit refers to the scooter as old scooter belongs to Len. So again, signifying that Len has passed away. We also see golf clubs as well as two fishing rods. So maybe Doreen also liked fishing. We see the cricket bat, a toolbox as well as an ashtray. So maybe Len was a smoker and perhaps he passed away from lung cancer. The other big Easter egg of course is the bird painting that we see the shopper trying to buy. How much is this? Oh whatever you think love. Now this is actually by Ken Dunn. It is originally called Parrots from 1985 and it is five very Australian birds. The red lorry, the cockatoo, the rainbow lorikeet, the galah and the black cockatoo. And they even posted about this on their Instagram as well. And it's just really cool to see like this very like iconic Australian painting be brought to life in Bluey. As I mentioned, we do also have a new character, the shopper who is voiced by David Murray, who doesn't seem to be a very famous person, but perhaps is a friend of Joe Brums or someone in the crew. And of course he does have a very unique accent. A lot of people have already 
mentioned this in Reddit comments that they feel like he has a very like traditional gay Australian accent and perhaps he is the first sort of representation of an LGBTQ character. There is no extra evidence for this. No one from the crew has said anything on social media or anything like this. So this is just currently speculation on Reddit. How much do you want for this? Oh well, um, what do you think? Two dollars? But let's talk about some of the other Australian references in this, starting off with some of the slang words, which is bugger lugs. Oh yes it will! Bugger lugs nice. is going to push it! Yeah! My bugger lugs. Now this is just kind of a friendly way to kind of insult someone. And 18 lollies! And how much are the lollies? Oh, two dollars. We also have lollies, which of course in America is called candy. And specifically the lollies they use are like the rock candy that are like very stereotypical for like old people to have. I'm trying to get a bit of cash together to go on holiday to the reef. Doreen also says that she wants to go to the reef for a holiday, which of course is the Great Barrier Reef up in North Queensland. And she definitely has enough money now, thanks to Muffin. You are one in a million. <laughs> Speaking of money, of course, this is the very first time that we see the $100 buck bill in Bluey. And of course, not surprisingly, it replicates the exact same one as what we would see in Australia. It is green. It has the male and female on either side of it, just like the Australian dollar bill, but now with dogs. The male is representing Sir John Monash and the female is representing Dame Nellie Melba. Now with the grannies themselves, we also have a few interesting references. There's the Simpsons one with Bingo trying to count her coins and of course, Grandpa Simpson as well. One. Two. Oh, that's a nice one. Hurry up! There's the Superman reference with the red cape that Gladys, aka Muffin, ends up wearing to become a super granny. Da, 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 da. Hello, it's a super granny! And as I said, her name is Gladys, so we now know Muffin's granny name. Hello, Gladys! And Muffin also says the title card for this episode. This episode of Bluey is called Granny Mobile. And the other granny, of course, that we need to talk about is the old grouchy granny Pug. And she is voiced amazingly by Margot Knight, who is a famous Australian actress. The table leg's blocking the footpath. I gotta break my leg. And just does such a great job with the lines of showing what a stereotypical old grouchy granny would say about like calling the authorities about silly little things. I should call the council. Keep the noise down. And also she's pretty mean to Chili and Bandit. So some kind of like possible awful things. Oh, nosy neighbors back. She calls Chili a nosy neighbor, which we kind of saw on the episode Tradies, but she also calls her Cattle Dog, which kind of sounded almost like a bit of a slur. Stay out of it, Cattle Dog. It was a bit of a weird one, but what do you cheeky dogs think? Do you think it was a slur? Let me know in the comments down below. Stay out of it, Cattle Dog. But of course she also calls Bandit fat or basically calls him fat. And he gets like really insecure about it, squeezing his belly and everything in the mirror. You need to lay off the biscuits. What? You said I was looking good! You are, honey. Ignore her. And we all, of course, thought that this was gonna lead into something with everything they've been hinting about in season three and might lead into something with exercise. But it kinda didn't. Oh, oh yeah. Jiggles. The other really weird thing, though, of course, is that the Granny Pug is completely clothed. Like, yes, yeah, she's got glasses on, but like, so does Doreen, and Doreen has a hat on just like her, but she has like a cardigan on and a dress on as well, which is kind of just weird, because then it kind of does suggest that they are all naked but she's the only one that's clothed. I made a theory a video about like the whole idea of what's going on with the clothes in the Bluey verse, so I'll leave it up here in the link above if you'd like to check it out. Now, of course, the Granny Pug versus Muffin is the most hilarious scene in this whole thing. What? The side says 300. <coughs> $900! I love the reference to the movie The Castle when Granny Pug says, you're dreaming. Dad, 450. But jousting sticks, tell him he's dreaming. 1000! What? You're dreaming! And I feel like maybe Muffin is channeling like her inner Trixie in this. We don't know what Trixie's job is, but we do assume that maybe she works in the city. So maybe she's a salesperson or a negotiator of some sort. And that's what Muffin is channeling here. 500. 11. Outrageous. If you don't want it, then don't buy it. Now the very last thing of course is the music. Now Geoff Bush did make a comment about this on his social media accounts about the fact that they always use music from Carmen for Muffin. And in particular in this one, they used the Habanera Aria by Bizet, who is also credited at the end with Joff Bush as well. I love when they credit like those like classical musical artists in the credits. It's just such a cool little thing to add in. But what a surprise. Overall, this episode for me was five out of five long dogs. It was hilarious. I love Muffin. So of course, this is always going to be one of my favorite episodes. But cheeky dogs, let me know in that comment section down below. How many long dogs would you give this episode? And what was your favorite Easter egg or hidden detail about it? But also don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as that bell for notifications. So you know whenever I release any other Bluey themed videos. But until then, I have picked you cheeky dogs out a few other videos that maybe you would like to watch. And I will see you all in another video. Mwah. Bye.